Hello. I'm about to read to you Dry to Dry, The Seasons of Kakadu. This, is, this book is by Pamela Freeman and Liz Anelli, and it actually is the winner of the Eve Pownell Award this book week. I'll try to show you all the pages, but you might need to borrow this book when we're back so that you can see all the detail. Dry to Dry, The Seasons of Kakadu. It is the dry over the plains and cliffs and rivers of Kakadu in Northern Australia. The air hangs heavy. It's hot and very humid. The rivers have shrunk down to creeks. The edges of the lakes are banks of mud where crocodiles sunbake. Look closer. There is a Northern long necked turtle that has buried itself safely in the cool mud waiting until the wet comes. In Northern Australia, there are two main seasons, wet and dry. In the middle of the year during the dry, it rains very rarely. That period lasts from May to October. The wet comes after that and lasts until April. A flock of little curlews, a thousand strong, arrives from the Arctic Circle and settles on the grasslands near the rivers. Other birds are coming too. Snipes, godwits, sharp-tailed sandpipers and more. Kakadu has more than 280 bird species, the most of any area in Australia. Thousands of birds from Europe and Asia come to Kakadu to avoid the northern winter. Some fly more than 5,000 kilometres. In the Pitirodia bushes, the rare Leichhardt's grasshoppers hatch and begin to chomp on the bitter leaves. They will go through seven stages before they reach full growth, molting their skin at each stage. High in the sky over the yellow water wetlands, the red-tailed black cockatoos flock noisily to their nighttime home, a grove of eucalypts before afternoon storm clouds gather. Lightning and thunder, the first kiss of rain on the blazingly dry grasslands. Although storms bring some rain in November and December, it is only just enough to start the creeks flowing again. Two magpie larks sing a duet together while building their round nest of mud and grass. The red lily sends up sweet smelling flowers from the billabongs and wetlands. In spring and early summer, the waters of Kakadu begin to spread and watercourses are washed clean. But the water is sometimes acidic and kills fish in the shrunken billabongs. The long-legged jabiru stalks the wetlands. Seeking out eels and frogs, it can take back to its babies in a huge old nest high up in a banyan tree. Although 25 frog species live in Kakadu and they are an important source of food for many creatures, including birds, snakes, fish and turtles, they all eat frogs, either when they are tadpoles or fully developed adults. Termites build their mounds up, 
Some are three times as high as a grown man. Other animals live in and on the mounds. Look, a gecko has found shelter from the hot summer sun. Where's the gecko? Termite mounds grow up to six metres above ground. The mounds are built to keep the termite nests beneath them cool and are made of mud, termite saliva and pieces of dried grass or feces. They can last for 100 years or more. Crack! Yes! The monsoon begins pelting down warm summer rain for hours. Wetlands spread across the low-lying ground. This is the wet. During monsoon season, it rains around two out of every three days. Some days, more than eight centimetres of rain can fall. Humidity is high, over 80% on most mornings. Crocodiles leave their riverbanks and go hunting. Kakadu has both freshwater crocodiles and the much bigger saltwater crocodiles that live on the beaches and in the estuaries of the rivers. Crocodiles eat birds, frogs, fish and crustaceans. Spear grass can grow up to two metres during the wet season. The temperature is high. There is enough light despite the clouds and water is plentiful. Perfect conditions for fast growth. The spear grass shoots up, delighting in the constant rain and heat. Within it, birds, snakes, frogs and lizards nest and scurry. Creeks and rivers swell and break their banks. Out across the plains, silver sheets of water spread, joining creek to creek until half of Kakadu becomes a wetland. The plateau's towering cliffs become thunderous waterfalls. Below them, at night, the chorus of frogs is deafening. In the paper barks, the brush-tailed Chuan hunts for centipedes. Look out! Goannas and snakes running away from the floods have climbed the same tree. Below, a water python catches a dusky rat while a king brown snake slithers into the bushes. Kakadu has many waterfalls. Some flow all year round, others only during the wet season. It is the force of these waterfalls that has slowly eroded the deep water holes that keep Kakadu alive during the dry. The rain has stopped. The wet is over. Under clear blue skies, mists blanket the wetlands each morning. Dragonflies zip across the pools and lakes, which are beginning to shrink. Migratory birds leave Kakadu, the great flights of little curlews and snipes darkening the air. The wetlands are a carpet of water lilies, their flowers held up from the lily pads on long, slender stems. The wetlands, the wetlands are home to many species of plants, including water lilies. Leaf, pondweed, sedges and spike rush live in the water. Around the billabongs grow freshwater mangroves, pandanus and forests of paper barks. 
and under these, the agile wallaby grazes. Now the windstorms come, surging and gusting. Knock them down, storms flatten the tall spear grass to the ground where it is eaten by wallabies or swiftly taken for nests by birds and termites. Green tree ants build a new nest by sticking leaves together. Inside it, they will farm other insects to collect their honeydew. There are countless species of insects living in Kakadu, from tiny mosquito larvae in, living in ponds to large lycarts grasshoppers, from damselflies to dragonflies, from grey tree ants to termites. Every part of Kakadu is alive. The sun burns down, the floods recede, leaving rich soil behind for new growth. Creeks retreat, <clears throat> Creeks retreat into their beds and the water holes sink down. The northern long-necked turtle buries itself in mud on the riverbank. This is the dry. Now Kakadu waits for the wet. It will come as it always does. Now this is some information at the back about Kakadu. I might turn it this way so I can read it easier. Kakadu is Australia's largest national park, over 20,000 square kilometres. It is dual world heritage listed for its extraordinary natural and cultural value. It covers a wide range of habitats and ecosystems, from beaches to the Arnhem Plateau, to the wetlands, to the dry centre. All are shaped by the yearly cycle of wet and dry seasons. Kakadu is Aboriginal land. It is leased by its traditional owners, the Bininj and Mungai people, to the Director of National Parks so it can be jointly managed. There is much more to Kakadu than landscape and animals. It is a site of great cultural importance, where, for example, you can see rock paintings that date back 20,000 years. It is estimated that Aboriginal people have lived in Kakadu for up to 65,000 years, the oldest living culture on Earth. Kakadu's native species have been endangered by the introduced cane toad, which is poisonous if eaten, and feral predators such as cats and foxes. Much of the park, staff, the park staff's work is devoted to ensuring that native species are protected. Although cycles of wet and dry have been stable for centuries, there is some evidence that climate change, climate change is shifting the patterns of monsoon rainfall. We do not know what effect this will have on the environment of Kakadu. This picture book has discussed two main seasons, the wet and the dry, but the indigenous people of Kakadu know that there are actually six seasons. Wurgeng, Garang, Ganameleng, Gajwedj, Bangareng and Yegi. Hopefully I'm saying them right. What Wurgeng, is the cold weather season, but it's still 30 degrees Celsius in the day. It's between mid-June to mid-August. Garang, hot dry weather, mid-August to mid-October. Ganameleng is pre-monsoon storm season from mid-October to late December. Gajwedj is monsoon season when the wet arrives, December to March. And Bangareng is knock them down storm season, which is in April. And Yegi is dry and cooler, but still humid, May to mid June. And it just shows you that you can look on certain pages to learn more about that. And here's a map of Kakadu and an index. Hmm, I wonder if you know 
what type of book this book is.